Today we're taking a look at a really cool site called Poplet. Poplet allows you to make interactive multimedia graphic organizers that you can share and collaborate with others. Let's see how easy it is to get started. I'm going to click over here to make a new Poplet, and I'm going to call this Poplet Test, and I'm going to choose a blue background color, and I'm going to make it so. Now, very simply to get started, I can double click anywhere on the screen. This is what they call a popple. So this is going to be my point number one. And the popple, I can actually do a couple of things. So very simply, I'm going to come over here and change the border of the popple. I can make it blue or any other color I see over here. I can also change the text. I can make it smaller or I can make it larger. I can make it centered, left, justified, all sorts of different placements. I can also draw pictures in the point one. So for instance, if this was going to be point one and this was going to be the beginning of a story, let's say I was talking about the witch's hat or Freytag's pyramid as we call it when we get older in English class, we could talk about the fact that this is going to be the setting over here. And I can change again the text over here very simply and just say setting. The really neat thing about this is that I can take this popple and I can drag it anywhere on the screen I want. I could also expand it by dragging out from any of the arrows in any direction I'd like. I get a new popples by clicking any of these little gray circles around the popple. So let's say I want to add one over here. Now I have a new popple. Okay, so let's get started over here. Again, I could take the, um, the drawing and again do the same type of drawing, but now point over here. And this would be, of course, the inciting incident. So I can add that as text. And of course, if I was doing this with a class, you can actually have examples from stories that the students were reading, or you can give an example of a story that they had already read. Notice how this is linked together. So I can take these and I can drag them around, and I can move the placement however I want. I'm going to show one more example, and over here what I'm going to do is click on a popple to the top, and I'm going to add it over here. Now notice I'm creating the witch's hat. If I wanted to see more of the screen, I could simply go over here to the top left and zoom out. So now I can create an actual witch's hat using these popples. And it really is a great way to show visually what's going on in the story. So the students can fill this in with any data that they want. One interesting thing that we'll take a look at now is adding content to popples. Let's take a look at how easy it is to include multimedia into these popples. That's what really makes them pop, if you ask me. So over here, we can include content from Flickr, we can include Facebook photos, we can include YouTube videos, and we can include any content we want that we can upload from your computer. It's a really simple way to get started. So for instance, let's say I wanted to go over here and add a YouTube video. Click on that. I can search YouTube very simply, so I'm going to type in Edgetecker and see what comes up. And we have over here, this was a wall wisher uh, demonstration, so I'm going to add that to the popple. Ironically, this is very similar to wall wisher. And the way it gets similar to Wallwisher, which is a great collaborative tool, is that this allows you to also share the popple. So I'm going to click on share in the upper right, and it says once you've shared the popple, it can be found on the internet, people can see it, you cannot unshare it. That's okay, I'm going to say let's start sharing. Notice all the great options I have. I can post it on any social network like Facebook or Twitter. I could also copy and paste the link directly or give this to my students as a link on the board that they can go in and very, very easily start editing. I can email 10 people. And I can even embed it on my classroom blog or website. This is a great way to have people start adding popples. You'll notice over here that it says my name around the popple. But of course, when your students sign in and start adding their own popples, they get to have their name on it. So you can see and trace the lineage of where things came from. Notice one more thing. If you click over here on the little gear on the top, you'll notice you can add new people. You can change, edit, undo, cut, copy, paste. You can organize these all in a very interesting way. So I can also do things, for instance, like this. Export as a PDF or JPEG, so it's a really great way to export it and get it out of this program so you could print it out or see it somewhere else for those that don't have a Poplet account. You can also do things like add content. Notice you could also add from the following places as well. We talked about Flickr, Facebook. You can add from Amazon, which would be really neat for those students that are doing, let's say, a project on Consumer Reports or finding a different product. You could also add from Google Maps, which makes things really interesting as well. You can change the view mode to make it the presentation mode, which makes it full screen and takes away some of these editing options. You can hide all the name tags. In the labs, you'll find all the things that they're testing out with the software, some really, really neat things. For example, bounce mode, time warp, <laughs> and permissions. It's a really great site. You definitely can check it out. It's poplet.com.